have a seat at the table with some men with confidence. Okay, so we're going to start off with the topic of Brittany Griner. I'm pretty sure everyone's familiar with her, what's going on in Russia, her recent sentencing, and how this is all played out in the news. So, question number one on the board for today. What are your thoughts on Brittany Griner and her legal issues in sentencing? Man, this is like crazy to me on so many different levels from what she was arrested for to how our country has responded to it. And then the sentencing that came down from Russia, it's just, it's a lot to process and a lot to take in. So I'm glad we're having this conversation because there's some meaty bits in here that we need to break down a little bit like you know for starters just the initial response that this professional athlete person of stature in our country was arrested and it was almost as if there was a hesitation to do anything to get involved there was kind of like this hiccup or stutter with uh we've got to go back we've got to go support britney and free britney and you know, I, I thought to myself, why are we hesitating? Why aren't we all over this? You know, I see to recall an incident involving some college players having an issue in China and people were a lot more quick to respond. So what gives it? You know, but, you know, fast forward that to now we got this nine year sentence thrown down and people in America have lost their minds like oh my god I can't believe this has happened um are y'all familiar with three strikes do you know how that works I mean nine years sounds like a long time but when you got people serving life <sighs> yeah this is I'm still trying to kind of rein all of my thoughts in on this because this is just like so many things and moving pieces going on here that uh, it's just a lot to process, man. It's a lot to process. Right. <clears throat> and dare I say it, well, I'm going to say it before you in the audience and my boys here say it. I am pulling the race card. It seems Dave Chappelle was right. <laughs> terrorists don't take black hostages and his point in saying that was the government won't care and I kind of feel like they don't care um, we've seen them hop on other cases pretty quickly and get the ball moving and got things done but with this it, it's, 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 it's like Terrence was saying there's some hesitation a while ago why is the hesitation? What's the deal? Are, are we going to do something about this or not? Or are we just going to talk about it? And it seemed like all we did was just talk about it. But then there's the other side of the coin. Um, and, and we were actually kind of talking about this, kind of hit on this before we even started. Americans and other countries behaving like Americans. Things that we do here in America not going to slide in other countries. All right. Here in America, uh, like for instance, I live in Washington state. Um, weed is legal here in the state. I can actually have a joint on me when I'm pulled over and the cops can't do anything about it. They can twist the issue if they want to, but for the most part, I'm not smoking it. It's unlit. It's in my pocket. You know, you can't do anything to it. It's legal, bro. But in other countries, they don't take too kindly to their laws being broken. And I'm remembering a certain kid in Singapore about 30 years ago who found that out pretty uh, gruesomely that you can't <laughs> just buy a can of spray paint and start tagging everything. He got cane 
and they tried to stop them from caning them. And Singapore was like, no, American or not. He came over here, he broke our laws, he pays the price. Dude got caned. <laughs> Privilege ignored. So, um, I don't know what this means for Brittany Griner. I'm sure she was given nine years. Maybe somebody somewhere in our country and our government can pull some strings and work out some deals and get her out of there if they care enough to do so. Um, but if not, it looks like she'll be doing nine years and her career in basketball is over. You know, sad, but it is what it is. I don't know if Tony has something to say about that. So, the, I think the two of you think that it's very complicated. I don't think it's very complicated at all. I think that... Okay, so before I answer my question, answer the question, let me just lay out a few things. That Brittany Griner, you know like how people say you can play the black card? Brittany Griner got like about three minority cards she can play. <laughs> <laughs> True story. True story. She can play the black, the woman, and the LGBT card. Like she can throw them all in, you know, three of a kind. Bam, bam, bam. You would think that there would be a huge uproar to get her back. Not as much as you would expect from any of the minorities. I think that this is really as simple as she did something that she's used to getting away with in another country and she did it at a time when the United States and that country aren't getting along very well so now she's a pawn in a political game like her transaction or her offense really isn't important like it didn't matter w what she did they're going to use her because she has a certain amount of name recognition a certain amount of name value in order to get what they want from the United States I think they're trying to get the release of someone I think he's called like the merchant of death or something like that <laughs> and I'm like uh, someone with that name I don't think we should let him out <laughs> Right? <laughs> if, if we have the merchant of death, I don't think that person needs to be allowed to reopen their business. <laughs> so right now, you know, it's to give you a basketball analogy, like she looking she looking like uh like Kyrie and Kevin Durant trying to get a trade out of Brooklyn, right? You know? <laughs> <laughs> She thinks that she's at a certain value, and the world is like, nah, you're not as valuable as you think you are. Like, you're not going to get three for a round pick. <laughs> and that's, but, oh, sorry, go ahead. go ahead. I was just going to say, that's part of the thing that makes this complicated to me is the fact that she's got, like you said, that close out Uno hand where you just bam, 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 drop the three cards and you out. But the support is fickle. It's kind of like, you know, women are kind of on both sides of this thing. Like, I don't know. Or, we are BG. You know what I'm saying? And same with the LGBT community. And, you know, same with the black community. It's just all kind of like, everybody's kind of tap dancing around it so I, that's why it's complicated to me because it's like usually there's one voice that's really loud and unified and you know taking up the mantle and this time it's really not so that's been uniquely different Victor Anatolivik Bout he's a Russian arms dealer he's basically a part of Tony Stark he was an entrepreneur, former Soviet military translator, and he used his multiple air transport companies to smuggle weapons since the collapse of the Soviet Union from Eastern Europe to Africa and the Middle East during the 90s and the early 2000s. 
He is the merchant of death. When you said merchant of death, it made me think about Tony Stark. I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, he said, maybe we should let this guy out. Um, I don't. I personally don't think it'll make a difference if we do let him out or not, because the the black market for firearms is a billion dollar industry. With with him being locked up, guns are still being transported all around the world. You can believe that. Believe it. <laughs> so I, I I would dare say I would make the trade for him and, and, and Brittany. So, so we get to give them Russian John Wick. <laughs> For Brittany Greta. And it's funny because when you were reading off all the stats, I'm like, okay, Merchant of Death, you know, Lethal Man and all of this connection. So what's your three-point rate, you know? <laughs> how many assists you get? <laughs> what's, how many points per game you He's a very com- uh, valuable commodity in their eyes, apparently, so I look maybe I haven't seen enough film on the guy but something they're after they, they want him back for a reason I don't know if they want to prosecute him or maybe it's the valuable information that he I mean he, he holds or or maybe it's who he is he's a military translator and he has all these companies that he used to ship weapons around the world I'm sure the guy knows something <laughs> that could be of value to, to, the, uh, to the Soviet Union or to whoever, to whatever party out there that wants him. And he's certainly an asset on the board, so they, they're not requesting them back for nothing. Right. I don't think they will re- request him back to imprison him or to, or to do anything to him. We already got him locked up. Like he's he's already off the board. So the only reason I can think of to bring him back would be to reactivate him, to, to make him active again. Hmm. Which, which sounds bad for business, unfortunately. <laughs> well, if I understood uh, uh, Nicholas Cage's movie um, um, message, um, it would be profitable to have him on the board. Because everybody be focused on him, and like magicians, all these other entities can continue to operate. <laughs> oh no, it's not us; it's him. Y'all, y'all let the merchant of death out. Don't, no, no, no! Don't look at my left hand. Don't look at what it's doing, making its deals, passing its billions. Um, you look at the merchant of death. It's him. He's the one. <laughs> yeah, keep your attention over here while I stab you with this one. Right. Sounds right. <laughs>